Hey, stay with me, Tim. I want to, uh, I wasn't going to do this, but I think it's really important too. You ready to get weird? Y'all ready to get weird? Okay. Oh, sorry, Britt. Um, so in the counseling world, we do this in one-on-one counseling. Were you ready to have a group therapy session together? Okay, but it's going to be individual. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You can, you can stay seated or standing if you want, but I, I'm going to ask all of you to close your eyes. Seriously. Like, if you, that's weird for you, everyone's doing it. And, and I want you to think of a happy place. It, it can be an imaginative place. It can be uh, a real place. Think, think of a place of safety. Think of a place of peace. It can be on a golf course or in a golf cart. It can be by a lake, a pond, a, a river, an ocean, the mountains. I want you to go to your safe, safe place. And, and this is something that we, we teach people to practice because this, this is how you make room. It, it's really just coming to an awakening or an awareness of what Derek said of God's permanent presence within your life, regardless of what you do and believe. And, and you can do this every day. I, I go to my safe place every day, especially when like chaos and anti-peace is trying to take my peace. You know what I'm saying? Come on. And so in, in this safe place, I just want you to use your senses right now. What do, you, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What do you feel? And then I'm going to ask you to just invite the Spirit into this moment. Now, now don't allow your preconceived ideas of what you think the Spirit is define how the spirit shows up because a lot of people think that the spirit is a male figure. <laughs> There's more definitions of the spirit being female in the scripture. So it might show up as a woman. You know, it's really ironic when I do these in one-on-one counseling is rarely does the spirit show up as a human being. It often shows up as an animal. And so we just allow the spirit to show up in your safe place right now. And if nothing shows up, that's okay. You're not weird or different. Sometimes this takes a, long, a, a lot of time for you to go to your safe place to experience the presence of the, the spirit which is alive and active in your life permanently. Sometimes you just have to become awakened to it. And, and maybe the spirit has something that it wants you to feel or hear in this moment. Just, just let yourself sit there. Tania just to come back and, and sing and again worship how you feel led to worship whether that's seated or, or standing or just just take a minute to slow down your universe and embrace the peace that you feel in this moment
See, we want to empower you to not just awaken to the fact that the Spirit's alive and active in you, but we want to empower you not to be necessarily impressed by the gifts that are ever on this stage, but to awaken to the gift that is within you. You, you can hear the Spirit. Sometimes you just need some guiding. I, I want to encourage you this week to take advantage of whatever popped up into your head and just allow the Spirit to show up in your mental real estate more and more. If you have a tough decision to make this week, man, go to your safe space and allow the Spirit to show up to help guide you. If, if you're frustrated because of where you are at in life, go to your safe space. If, if your spouse triggers you in the moment, go to your safe space. I, I want to teach you to become more aware of how the Spirit guides and moves in your daily life so that you actually can control your emotions. and You actually can be the Spirit of God in the lives of other people when you go into your workplaces because you're not allowing your own circumstances to dictate how you love. It's powerful when you recognize the power that you were born with. Well, come on, church. It's it's an incredible life when you realize who Jesus is to you. I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about the who before do principle because we're in the series called Chase the Lion. It, it will be impossible for you to find contentment in this life if you're always chasing a lion to try to get fulfillment. You have to know that being fulfilled by the label of son or daughter is the greatest place of contentment you will find in your entire life because if you don't know who you are, you will chase lions to try to get validation in the lion without knowing that you have been validated by Christ before you've chased or accomplished or achieved anything in your life. You are an amazing human being before you do anything amazing. You are a worthy human being before you do anything worthy. And it's important for us to awaken to how the Father views us. Because if you don't know who you are, you will continually find disappointment in every season of life. Again, we don't want you to be someone who aspires to be people like us on the stage. We want you to see the people on the stage and be inspired because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive and active in you, church. And you're capable of doing great things. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? You sound like it. Man, I love you all. Thank you, band, so much. I know we didn't plan that, but it was awesome. I didn't plan to do that either. Hey, PC, I need my uh, podium because I don't know where I'm going to go here. Are you all good? Uh, Laura told me that I need to stop challenging you all to be energetic in the morning because it's the morning. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> that was a trick question. Yeah, high school, middle school students, you guys are, are dismissed. Uh, we're in week two of Chase the Lion. Hopefully you all uh, took advantage of these cards and fill them out. If you didn't, you can get them on the info desk or the welcome desk as you get out. Hey, we want to know what lion you're chasing. If you're new and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm going to give you a quick recap, okay? But we want these because we want to see what, what God is doing uh, inspirationally in your life. And, and if you came to Hill City Church and you were really hoping and expecting for some super deep Bible teaching, that happens a lot, just not today, Okay? I got four verses, and they're going to be the same four, four verses that we looked at last week. They're going to be the same four verses we look at over the next two weeks. Uh, we do exegetical studies, which is just a really fancy seminary word where we go verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book, and we teach that way. But we also have a podcast that does a lot of that, and so uh, you might be frustrated because this morning we're not going to go super in-depth. We're going to go inspirational. Can I inspire you today? Good. I'm glad. Some of you that didn't talk don't want to be inspired. That's okay. So we're in this series called uh, Chase the Lion, and we got this idea from Mark Batterson's book called Chase the Lion that, that he wrote almost a decade ago, and uh, it comes from 2 Samuel. So you, you ready to throw that uh, passage of scripture up for me? 2 Samuel, verse 23, or chapter 23, verse, uh, you're leaving me hanging back there, 
Reese, can you throw up that verse? Because I don't have it memorized. There it is. Reese is doing a great job, by the way. Uh, chapter 23, verse 20. It says, Benaniah. Do you know who Benaniah is? If you were here last week, you found out that Benaniah was one of David's 30 mighty men. But Benaniah, son of that dude, a valiant fighter, a valiant, valiant, violent, valiant. Thank you. I love y'all. Some fighter from th- that place, uh, he performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors, kind of a big deal. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. Pause. That's where we got this inspiration. Is uh, uh, If that's not inspiring to you, I don't know what I was going to say just then because this whole passage is very weird. Pastor Shannick made a lot of jokes about who chases a lion on a snowy day, let alone a snowy day somewhere in Israel. That's, that's weird to think about. Maybe Israel. I don't know where this was. Uh, he went into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. If a lion falls into a pit, I'm laughing at it. Ha ha, you idiot. I'm not climbing back down in there. Otherwise, a lion would laugh and go, ha ha, you idiot. Okay. He killed a lion on a snowy day. At verse 21, and he struck down a huge Egyptian. Although, are you guys, yep, there. Although the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. That's kind of gnarly. Can you say gnarly? Gnarly. Uh, verse 22. Such were the exploits of Benaniah, son of that dude. Uh, he was, or he too was as famous as the three mighty warriors. So there were three of David's 30. These were the mightiest, most feared warriors of David's army. Uh, Benaniah is now up there, right? And then, and David put him in charge of the bodyguard. Kind of a big deal. Uh, not, 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 not really a Christ-centered story, right? Okay. Uh, but an inspirational story. Okay, I'm not, I'm not encouraging you to kill because that's anti-Christ. I'm not encouraging you to uh, go fight some Moabs and Egyptians. That, that's not Christ. But, but it is inspiring to look at that portion of Scripture where he chased a lion into a pit on a snowy day, and, and he killed it. And, and so Mark Batterson wrote a whole book called In a Pit with a Snow, in a, what is it called? In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day. And, and it was about chasing a lion. Like, what is your 500-pound dream? What is something that intimidates you? Or what is something that you should be doing with your life? I know there's a lot of pastors out there that say, if you had all the money in the world, what is the one thing that you would be pursuing if you knew it could not fail? It's a pretty thought-provoking question. And I, I think a lot of us, especially in, in America, uh, we live with the fear of failure and the fear, fear of finances that prevent us from actually chasing the things that we have passions about. And so this is what this whole sermon series is about, is to be passionate again and, and maybe ask some better questions and maybe start removing some fears in your life so that you can pursue, pursue, pursue some of the things that God has called you, and already given you the power to do. And so we actually did this series called Chase the Lion in 2018, and we came back to it called Rechase the Lion. And, and Shannon kind of talked a little bit about our story, but he left out some va- What? He left out some details. I was going to say vast details, but does that make sense? Just so you know, I've got my friend Dean on the front row here, and he makes fun of me every misspoken word <laughs> that I say. And there's a lot of them, just so you know. So... As a public speaker who messes up a lot, you should be overcoming your fears to be chasing <laughs> your... Okay, but I, uh, when we decided to do Rechase the Line, which you know, the re-initiative, that's part of the re there, uh, Tania, who created this graphic, decided to put the circle in gold. And she's like, it's kind of like a full circle moment. And I was like, that is... Yeah, it is, this is a full circle moment for us. So I want you to, to understand uh, the six years... That came into the picture. In fact, my man Josh, uh, throw this picture up. I took this last week, but six years ago, Josh decided to take the the series Chase the Lion, and he got this. Are you gonna leave me hang, Reese? Are you paying attention, buddy? <laughs> throw that picture up. Are you inspired so, so good, Ian? Our high school so good. You see, they're already making fun of me for my language. <laughs> we'll we'll let the high school student come back there and fix that. Thanks, Ian. We, we, no one's serving back there ever again. <laughs> just, did you hear? 
Did you hear Wanda and Louise in unison, the sisters over here? We love you, Rays. <laughs> there it is. I think there's another picture to get closer. He got, I'm not going to encourage you to do this, but he got, do you have the other one? The next one. Go to the next one. There it is. Chase, yeah, I, know, I can know who, <laughs> Chase the Lion. That was the actual graphic. Now, I'm not encouraging you to get tattoos. But I asked Josh if I could share this story because last week, remember, Pastor Shanick read like 20, 20 cards of people that, that gave, they're like, hey, this is the line I want to chase. Well, one of those cards was Josh's. Josh's card last week was he wanted to quit his great paying job to start his own business. And he did that because of this sermon series. Now, the sermon series just inspired the dream. He was already thinking about that, right? But as I was talking to him this week, he goes, yeah, maybe don't, don't share that. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> he said, don't share that because it took me four years to do it. And I said, that's the whole reason for why I'm going to share that is because chasing the lion is a process. I mean, he had family members tell him that he was crazy for quitting his good paying job to pursue what he wanted to do, which was uh, make a lot less money in the beginning so that he could actually give his family most of his time. And yes, it took him four years to do it, but that's the whole point of this. We're not expecting you to figure out this lion overnight. We're not expecting you to chase and kill this lion within the four weeks of talking about the sermon series. This is something that, that might take four years. It might even take 40. But we want you to begin thinking about how you can be living a life that is not just inspirational for your own family, but for generations that will follow. Like, what lion do we need to be chasing in our lives to kill? In 2018, when we did this series, we had very little knowledge that in the fall of 2018, we would be planning a second campus. Now, Shanik told you this last week. What he didn't tell you is we both went to Guatemala in the summer of 2018, and Ivan Tate, who, who preaches at Evangel every year, he, he's the guy that oversees this orphanage that we were at, and he looked right at Shanik and he said, I got a prophetic word for you. Do you remember this? He goes, more campuses, more campuses, more campuses. And we thought, uh, we don't know how to do that. <laughs> Sounds cool in a prophetic setting. But then when you actually have to do it, you're like, what, what, what are we doing? And so in the fall of 2018, this opportunity opened up and we're like, okay, this is the first of many campuses. And, and he told you last week that that campus, that, that ministry that we had that we called City Campus, which was a direct you know, replication of what we did on Sunday mornings here. It was just a different day. That thing failed. But we don't actually believe in failure because we learned a lot. We learned about each other as a team. We learned a lot of what not to do. We really learned that planning campuses isn't the lion that we're supposed to be changing, ch uh, chasing. Because if we didn't do that, we would still be thinking about how can we be planning more church services, which in my opinion... We're not the type of church that's going to just throw up a Hill City Sellersburg and a Hill City Louisville. We don't want more church services because at the end of the day, I don't know if church services really change a lot of people's lives. <laughs> Can I say that? Like, sure, we, we, we'd want the church to grow, but the heart here is not so that more butts fill these seats. We want to be a part of something where our community is actually impacted, specifically where our community is p impacted by people who will never go to a church. Some of you aren't as excited as I am about that. And so in 2019, we, f we folded that campus, and, and we lived with a, a lot of the shame of, uh, I thought, more campuses, more campuses, more campuses. Sometimes prophetic words just don't hit, and that's Okay. Sometimes they inspire you to do something that you think is the lion you're supposed to be chasing so that you actually get the vision and the dream for the right lion. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with chasing the wrong lion because sometimes chasing the wrong lion gets you to the right lion. 
in 2019, we were so frustrated, we actually hired somebody. We paid somebody and hired them. They flew in to teach our entire uh, leadership team and, and the elder team. We brought them in for two days to do a vision training to help us catch vision here because we're like, it's not more campuses, but it's something else. We got to be chasing a lion to inspire change in this community. And so we hired this person, and, and, and then we came up with this idea. Okay, maybe, maybe the first thing we need to do is, is change the name of the church because at that time it was Cornerstone Church. We're like, we're, we're starting from scratch. It's not necessarily about, about services, and, and we're going to change it to Hill City because we really want people to get this idea that, that you are a city on a hill, and when you leave the organizational church, you're still the church going to impact your community, and you have influence, and you are all pastors. Even if you don't want to be, welcome to the club. I don't want to be. Okay? And then 2020 hit, and all that went, Yeah. You don't even know that we painted this building and no one saw the new paint on this building for three months because we were shut down. Because we had this big buildup and we were going to launch it like the week after the world shut down. And then we're like, now what? You remember. Now, now COVID is like a legit time. We're like, oh, that was COVID. That was pre-COVID. You talk like that like I talk? And so we're like, oh, my goodness, like, what is going on? And then 2023, we finally get the vision for this reinitiative where we're actually making real change in this community. But it's taken us over a year. Now we have five properties. But this was like a six-year journey, y'all. And God knows what it's going to be like in 12 years, in 18 years, when this thing doubles and triples. Like, I'm so excited that we are now chasing this line because I think our community is actually noticing. And again, the goal isn't to get this church to have more butts and seats. The goal is so that you are actually a part of something that actually makes an impact in our community. That's why I get fired up. I, I, I'll preach your face off whether you show up or not, just so you know. But I wanted to highlight that process because the process is not easy. And it's not quick. So don't be discouraged if you couldn't think of a lion to chase over this last week. And don't be discouraged if you can't really think of the lion to chase over the next couple weeks. But we want you to start thinking this way about what it is in your life that you are going to do with your life. Specifically enjoying the process or enjoying the journey on the way to where you're going. You remember Ben and I's process was he, he killed two Moabites, a lion and an Egyptian. And because he did that, it led him to the position of bodyguard in David's mighty arm, army. Like that is incredible when you think about it. Because sometimes we're in the process and we're knee deep in our scuvola. And we're like, what's the point of all this? And in five years, ten years, you'll learn that some of the things you went through weren't God-ordained for your life, but you're thankful that you went through them because they gave you the tools and the courage and the thought perspective to chase the lion that you're going to chase in 10 years. Does that make sense? And so two things you have to, to learn before you chase your lion, I already talked about it, is the who before do principle. This is learning to be before you chase. Learning to rest in the presence of God, which is permanent, by the way. The second one is the why before what. And I learned both of these from Shannon. He actually preached these in our first chase line. I love these principles because oftentimes we chase lions and people don't know who they are before they chase and they don't know the reason for why they're chasing before they chase. And if we're not careful, we will put our identity in the victory or the lion that we slaughter which will satisfy you for a season, but eventually when that thing changes or disappears or, or the seasons in life continue and, and you find disappointment in the lion because you're like, what's next? If you are constantly chasing after a lion to find your identity, you will always have disappointment in your future. So you have to know who you are and be content and satisfied in knowing that you are a son and you are a daughter before you chase because your identity isn't in what you accomplish and what you achieve. Your identity isn't even in the legacy that you leave behind. Your identity is being content in knowing who you are, which is worthy and righteous and good because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago before you even believed it. He's a better Savior than you think he is. So we're not chasing lions to fulfill something in us. We're chasing lions because we're already fulfilled in knowing that Christ is in us. And it's different. As Colossians 3.17 says, it says, whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which means you can do whatever. Do you know that God's will for your life is whatever? 
What are your passions? Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to say, well, I really want to be a drug dealer, and you said whatever, <laughs> then you be the best drug dealer in the name. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Kidding. It's way too far. The only person not laughing is my boss. <laughs> just kidding. Obviously, that wouldn't be doing it all for Christ. Okay, okay. Can we move past that one? Please forgive me. All three of our elders, too, were looking at me like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm not going to repeat that, but you're not wrong. So on page 28 of this book, Chase the Lion, he, he calls it his page 28 vision. And I, lo I love this question. In fact, he's got a couple questions in this book that are really worth your, your thoughts. In, in, in page 28, he says, are you living your life in a way that is worth telling stories about? That's an awesome question. That's for you. On page 159, he, he says this. He says, an inheritance is what you leave for someone, but a legacy is what you leave in someone. That's so good. And then verse, or, or page 163, he says this, you may not influence a million people, but who knows, you may influence one person who influences a million people. And so that's what's so important. In two weeks, I'm going to talk about how comparison oftentimes kills us from chasing the lion that we're supposed to kill. Uh, but it's so important for us to understand that the way that we live now, whatever, in honor of Jesus, right, whatever you choose to do is about leaving a legacy in the people that follow you, which means when you understand who you are, it doesn't create arrogance or pride, which we're going to come back to that word pride. It's a great trigger word in the church, and I can't wait to unpack it this morning. But when you understand who you are, it should create this spirit about you, this confidence about you that actually promotes you to get underneath people to push them up. Because you don't need their praise, you already got the praise of the Father. So you become this person that's inspirational, not just for your immediate family, but also the people that you have influenced. Because who knows, the person that might you the, the person that you might impact the most, that might be the person that goes on to be the next Steve Jobs. That might be the next person that goes on to be the next whoever that impacts our community in a millions or maybe even billions type of way. There is no lion that is too small. And some of you are going to go to your grave, and the lion that you didn't chase dies with you, and it could have benefited your kids and your grandkids, but you allowed fear to overtake your life instead of understanding the power that Christ gave you. And if we didn't talk about it as the church, then we failed you as leadership, because we should be inspiring you not to make our dreams come true, but inspire you so that we can come alongside you to make your dreams come true. We're in this together. You gotta know, you gotta know who you are before you do something. You gotta know why you're doing it before you do it. So let me uh, highlight last week, and then I'm gonna close. Cool. So last week, Shannon brought up some very interesting statistics and a very good challenge. Right? He said, "Faith is the willingness to look foolish." My man Josh looked foolish to a lot of people in his inner circle because he was quitting a good-paying job. And he had a wife and two kids to provide for, but he did it anyways because he gambled on himself. He knew his power. Faith is the willingness to unlearn your fears, Shanik said. Man, many of us aren't chasing lions because of that one thing. We're scared of what will happen if we don't kill it. When you should be scared of what would happen if you don't chase it. And then he brought up a statistic that I don't think many of us thought about. I've been thinking about it all week. He talked about on people's deathbeds statistically. Now, there's a lot of books that have unpacked the science. But he used this statistic. He said 84% of people, when they get into older age, regret things they didn't do. Not things they did, which we all have regrets. You need to understand that there is now no more condemnation or shame in Christ. Romans 8.1. So if God doesn't condemn you or shame you, why are you still living in that regret? 
And I get that. That's easier said than done. But some of us need to unlearn the religious BS that we've been taught in our lives because God says seven times in Scripture that He remembers our sins no more. So why do you? 84% of people regret not doing something. I don't want you to be a part of that statistic. And then he said something. He said, he said, maybe you'll chase a lion and your grandkids will kill it. That speaks to the process. That's real good. But it, it, when he said that, you know, I'm a preacher. So I started thinking about my message for this week, last week. And I was like, oh, my gosh. He just said something that, that, that's going to change the way I preach this week. Because, because that might be true for some of you. Some of you might chase lions that your kids or grandkids will kill. Uh, but what if you're able to chase a lion and kill it so that your kids don't even have to deal with it? Or, or maybe you chase and kill your lion so it doesn't even affect your kids. That's not uh, something that you're chasing in terms of achievement. Uh, here's what I mean by that. I don't know a single person that doesn't say this phrase. I'll do anything for my kids, especially grandparents. I'll do anything for my kids. I'll do anything for my kids. And usually this means around the concept of protection. Rarely does this mean getting in shape and staying healthy so that you're around long enough to help them. Rarely does this mean dealing with my emotional trauma and baggage so that it doesn't come back into my relationship with my kids and grandkids. I'll do anything for my kids. Oh, will you? Will you start doing the pain, painful steps right now to get emotionally healthy so that it doesn't affect the relationship with your kids and your future grandkids? Because you know we have free counseling for y'all. And a lot of y'all don't take advantage of that. And a lot of y'all think that that means that you're weak if you have to admit that you need counseling. I think it's weak to admit that you don't need counseling. We all need counseling. You all need somebody in your corner to remind you who you are. Most of y'all don't even know who Bundini Brown is. Bundini Brown is who Muhammad Ali gives credit for his success. Because Bundini Brown was in his corner on every fight night pumping him up. Bundini Brown was the dude in the locker room saying, you got this. There's no one that can defeat you. Sting like a butterfly. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Do you know who came up with that phrase? Not Muhammad Ali, Bundini Brown. You know who doesn't get the credit? Bundini Brown. But you know who's my hype man? Bundini Brown, and I didn't even know him. You need to be a Bundini Brown for somebody else. Mostly your kids and grandkids. It's time for us to start dealing with our baggage and our trauma so that it doesn't affect our kids in a negative way. And what's better is some of you are like, dang, I've already screwed up. You know how incredible it would be if even at a ripe age you started dealing with some of the things so that your kids actually got to witness your change? Not only so that your kids can watch you do it, but so that they can benefit from you doing it. Maybe the line you have to chase is negative self-talk because you haven't addressed it. And if you're still struggling with negative self-talk, y'all, I wrote a book for y'all. Selfish plug right here. <laughs> this book is amazing. It is amazing. It is my life work. It is my emotion. It's amazing because I've done it and I do it. And if you haven't bought this yet, why haven't you? And, and if you're like, oh, he just wants money, I'll give it to you for free, y'all. Like, seriously, do the work. Start doing the work to get healthy emotionally. Because Proverbs 23, 7 says, as you think you are. We don't talk about the power of our thoughts. This is why it's so important to align how the Father views you. Because if you, view, if you view yourself in a negative light, that's not how the Father views you. So you're wrong to think of yourself in a negative light. Let me, let me, let me prove my point. All right, y'all got smartphones, don't you? Take it out right now. Some of y'all are like, I've already been on my smartphone this whole time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Get out your smartphone. Get out your smartphone. Everybody do this. Get out your smartphone. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm, I'm going to ask you to take a selfie in a minute, but I, I'm going to put some rules on this, okay? Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy that gets in somebody else's selfie, okay? No photo bombs in these selfies. 
Anthony, do you know what a selfie is? A selfie is when you, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they have one phone. Okay, you guys can do it together. You can, that's the only time you can do it together. If you only have one phone between y'all, do this together. If you don't have a phone, just imagine it, okay? So we're going to take a selfie. Don't, don't photobomb somebody else. You're going to ruin the illustration, all right? Don't do it. Don't be that guy. And this first selfie that we take, you're not allowed to delete it. All right, you ready? You ready? I'm going to do it with you, all right? You ready? I'm going to have you all photobomb me. Oh, Dean, you're getting photobombed. All right, you ready? We're going to take it on three, two, one. All right, keep it up. Keep it up there. Keep it up there. No, no redos, no redos, no redo. Okay, this is, I'm going to make this light, okay? You ready? You ready? If your first thought was negative, you got to buy my book. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> we laugh. We laugh. Stay with me. Stay with me. We laugh. But if your first thought was negative, that's not okay. When you look at yourself, Wanda, come on, pay attention. If your first thought was negative, if your first thought was negative about your appearance or if your first thought was negative about who you are, you need to start working on the first thoughts that you have because our first thoughts should be the first thoughts of the Father. It's time that we start aligning our negative self-talk because there's why I actually had you take the selfie. The only person that can stop you from chasing a lion in your life is in that photo. That's it. You are the only person that can prevent you from leaving a legacy in people. And you are more powerful and you are more capable than you think you are. You have to conquer the way that you think about yourself because it's really, really important for you to align how you view you with how the Father views you. And he's ecstatic about you. He's never frowned at you. He's never been disappointed in you, as, as Paul Young teaches. If he was disappointed in you, then that would mean he had expectations of you. And if he had expectations of you that could cause disappointment, then he doesn't know the future. God has never once been disappointed in you because it's not about your efforts and performance. It's about Jesus' efforts and performance. And the only thing you need to do is to align how the Father views you right here. Proverbs 18 21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Sometimes you talk so, the, the people that love to talk negative about other people, it's a sure sign to me that they talk negative about themselves. Start paying attention to it. The, most in, the, the, the people that gossip the most are the most insecure people because they don't believe in themselves. So they got to talk about everybody else. It's, uh, people that talk about other people doing stuff are people that aren't actually creating and engaging with culture and creating something for the culture. And because they're not creating, which is the greatest form of you acting like the Father, is when you are creating. And some of you need to create some stuff to benefit generations. But, but when you are not creating, you become a critic because it's easier to critique other people who are creating because you're not creating yourself. You have way too much power and way too much capabilities to be a critic, you need to start becoming a creator. And so here's how I'm close. Tim, come help me close. Uh, I'm going to call you out. Okay, Kim? Okay, so I, I asked Kim last week what her line was in a, in a, uh, as she was leaving. She was like, nah, I don't have a line yet. And then she emailed me. And it was great. I, lo I, lo I, I read that email like this. But she said something in this email that triggered how I'm going to close, okay? Because she said, it's not that I'm chasing a lion because it feels like I'm chasing a pride. You know how prophetic that was? That's incredible. Like a pride of lions. Okay, just making sure you sometimes got to spell it out. I think that we should be chasing lions so big that it feels like a pride, y'all. And so it got me thinking, you know, I, I asked Shanek to help me out because, you know, he's so much better at this alliteration stuff than I am. And so we, we start sat and sitting down like, okay, pride. 
how, how can I inspire people around this idea of pride? Even having pride in, a, in accomplishing a pride, taking down a pride for our kids. And, and so we came up with, with a couple ideas, three. And, and, and so we're going to leave these three up there. I, I want you to identify with one of them. And maybe the pride of lions that, that you have to tackle first is properly resting in divine entanglement. I love that word entanglement because it, it, it's that I've, I've just been sitting in this intertwined language for the last year. Like you are intertwined with Father, the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Like this is an intertwining. You've always been intertwined with the Father. Some of you just forget it. You've been entangled with the Father. He's proud of you. He loves you. And, and so maybe you need to properly rest in his divine entanglement. And maybe that's the the lion that you're going to chase. And you might think that's insignificant because it's not like this big, audacious 500. Do you know how big it is to, to rest in the divine entanglement of the Father? Because when you rest in the divine entanglement of the Father, you will know who you are and you will actually conquer negative self-talk. And that might be the biggest lion in the world. Because we just settle for being okay with talking negatively about yourself. You would confront people if they talk to you the way that you talk to you. And if you wouldn't confront people, there's more trauma that we can help you unpack here. Maybe for you, it's personal responsibility. Personal responsibility in discipline and empowerment. Some of you have been like, ah, I'll get that in another season of life. And because you don't discipline yourself... You sit in a season of comparison, constantly looking at the lions that all your friends are chasing and coming up with excuses. And it's not because you're not capable, it's because you're not disciplined. And a lot of times we even have prayer requests for God to move in our lives. And and, and the reality is, is God has already been moving in your life. You've just been missing certain things because you're not disciplined. Because the discipline shouldn't just benefit you, it should inspire you to be a person of empowerment so that every person you meet, you stop thinking selfishly about yourself because you're so insecure and you start noticing the power in other people and you become somebody who's so disciplined in your personal life that when you get around people, you can't help but empower people. Maybe for you, it's providing real inspiration despite experience. Because so many of us disqualify ourselves because of our past. If you know what I've done and if you know what I've been through, you would tell me that I'm not qualified to talk on that subject. My goodness, you might be the best person to talk about that subject. And you know, you know, Jesus it says that he couldn't do miracles in his hometown. It wasn't because he had any limitations in him to do a miracle. He could have done a miracle in his hometown. It's because there were limitations put on him by the people that refused to believe or refused to hear or refused to be inspired by Jesus because, oh, that's just Jesus. I grew up with Jesus. And some of the most damning people in our lives are our family because they know you. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, Corey, you're still high school Corey, which was lazy Corey, so I don't know really Corey at 37, but I'm going to speak high school Corey over you. That, that's my personal thing that I had to overcome is this idea that I was lazy because I heard it my whole day gone life. That's not who I am. That's who I was. And so maybe we have to provide real inspiration for other people despite our own lived experiences. And one of those three lions, maybe, maybe that's the lion that you have to start chasing. Properly resting in his divine entanglement, personal responsibility and discipline and empowerment, providing real inspiration despite experience. Anthony, those are all P-R-I-D-E, pride. They spell pride. Did you catch that? He got it. And then I started thinking about this, like, the church does not really do a great job speaking about pride, or they wrongly attach someone being confident as being prideful. You get around these Christians, they're a lot of fun to be around. That's sarcasm. Um, The reality is, is we actually should be full of pride. And here's what I mean by full of pride. Don't, Don't misquote me. We should be people who walk in the power that we know we already possess. We should be people who walk in the righteousness that was a gift by Jesus without your doing and without your permission and without your belief. We should be people who walk with integrity, which integrity, I just learned integrity this week, is really different from character. Integrity simply just means to be somebody who does what they say they will do. 
We need to be people of dare. This is the lion that you have to chase. Like, I dare you to believe in yourself so that you can actually be an encouragement to other people. We should be so full of pride that people are inspired by our lives because we're chasing that lion, which is really a pride, and we're going to take down the whole thing. Come on, church. Do you believe in yourself the way that the Father believes in you? Do you walk in that power and that righteousness and integrity with dare and encouragement for other people? Because I'm telling you, the lion that you should be chasing is not just for you. It's for everybody who you have influence over. So I want you to take advantage of this. If you, if you didn't do this, would you do this this week? Take a couple, write it down, put it on your fridge, put it on your dash, put it next to your nightstand. I, I want to encourage you. This is a process. Again, if you're really struggling with coming up with an idea, reach out to somebody. Talk about it with somebody. Talk about your passions. Well, I'm thinking this, and maybe it's this, and maybe somebody can help you process this a little bit. But we want to know your lion. Can you write it down on a card and put it up? We only got six last week. I want 600, Okay. Well, do the math, right? Yeah, maybe it's six lions that you should be chasing. That's how we get to 600, kid. Okay. Come on, church. Will you take this up on that? Would you be inspired today to maybe chase some lions or prides so that our kids and grandkids and great grandkids don't have to deal with some of the stuff that we could have conquered for them? Maybe they can reap the benefits, right? An inheritance is for them, but a legacy is in them. And maybe we can leave legacies, character, integrity. Maybe we can leave legacies of discipline, of achieving from a right place, not achieving from a motivation of trying to gain acceptance by the people who won't accept you even way. Anyways, church, you're empowered. You're his beloved, and you're capable of chasing and killing lions. You believe that? All right. You got closing? Yeah, come on up here. Close me up. I'm going to pray for you all. Jesus, we just thank you so much for who you are. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your inspiration. I thank you for the story of Benaniah. Uh, that I thank you for Mark Batterson taking this idea and running with it, not just to inspire his group of people, but he had no idea that Chase the Lion would become a New York Times bestseller and millions of people would be inspired by it to chase their lines. I pray that any person that is disqualifying themselves in this room, that you would show up in their safe place and remind them of how powerful and capable they are. I pray that no one leaves this church building without inspiration and empowerment and boldness to be able to chase the lion. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we just give it up for Pastor Corey and that message of encouragement this morning? Um. Here's what I have as we, as we close out today. Um, today was, was so important to hear what, what Pastor Corey had to say. It really was because we can get so caught up in what we're accomplishing and all the things we're putting our hands to and what we're doing that we really fail and we really neglect on understanding who we are and building ourselves up in our identity. And I was just reminded that this past week I even had a, a conversation with, uh, with, a, with a good friend. And they were saying, like, how do you how do? You do it? And I'm like, I don't know. What do you mean? Like, wh- wh- what do you mean when you say that? He's like, well, I'm not talking about, like, the stuff you're able to accomplish. But in the midst of, like, pastoring the church and family and these houses and new endeavors and lines you're chasing and all these other things, you still show up and you're present. You still show up and you have a smile on your face. You still walk in every place I've ever seen you walk in with joy. And I'm like, oh, well, that's easy. I, I, I know who I am and I know whose I am. All this other stuff are just things that I get to be a part of and do. But I can rest in knowing who I am and that I'm a king and the king lives in me. And so I don't let those things phase me, bother me. Yes, we have failures, but I'm not a failure. Yes, I trip up, but... Just because I face obstacles, I can't let that dictate me giving up. Like, I just, I know who I am and I know what God's called me to do. I'm going to keep taking steps towards what I feel like is in front of me. And I'm going to do it with, with an attitude of knowing who I am and what, what I carry. And that's really what I want for all of you. That's what Pastor Corey was preaching to you about today and alluding to, making sure that it is who before do, that you come to an understanding of who you are and whose you are. 
And I want to speak just over you that you are incredible sons and daughters. And I want you to hear this right now today. You still might be putting dreams down. You still might be writing lines down on those cards, and I hope you do, and I hope I get to read some of them. But I want you to know, before you ever even get to a place where you've tackled that lion and killed that lion and accomplished that lion, I want to speak over you the same thing that the Father already speaks over you, that you are a son and daughter in whom he is well pleased in, period. And when you get to the place of understanding that, that is the abundant life that Jesus came to bring. Amen? Amen. Well, I hope you were encouraged and inspired today. Don't forget to drop those cards off at the welcome desk. There are offering baskets. Just drop it off in there. Or if you see me, see Pastor Corey, hand those cards in to us. And then until next week, just know as you leave this place, you are loved and there's nothing you can do about it. See you next Sunday.